It's possible you're watching this program in your bedroom, perhaps alone, perhaps with your significant other, perhaps with someone you've only just met, in which case, why the hell are you watching Newsnight? But whatever your bedroom circumstances, would you like someone from the Crown Prosecution Service in there with you, just to make sure you're not doing something grossly offensive, disgusting or otherwise obscene, and then taking a photograph of it? In essence, that's what happened to a barrister, Simon Walsh. He's been on trial, charged under the Criminal Justice Act of 2008, which makes it illegal to possess or look online at any pornographic image depicting an act which results or is likely to result in serious injury to a person's anus, breasts or genitals. Now, I don't want to cause anyone offence, so if it's not clear to you by now where this item's going, you might want to find the remote. The charges against Mr Walsh related to photographs on his computer, including images of anal fisting and one of an object being inserted into the tip of a penis. Another image found on Mr Walsh's email account was said to be an indecent image of an underage boy. During the trial, a barrister from the Crown Prosecution Service suggested to an expert witness that people who attended sexual health clinics engaged in more risky practices. She replied that people who attended sexual health clinics took their sexual health seriously. This afternoon, the jury at Kingston Crown Court in London found Simon Walsh not guilty on all six charges against him. And although he keeps his freedom, in the meantime, he's lost his job, working as an aide to the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. Well, in a moment, we'll hear from Simon Walsh, who was cleared today. First, the woman who decided to bring the case, the Chief Crown Prosecutor for London. Alison Saunders, why did the CPS bring this case? Um, we brought the case because there was sufficient evidence. Um, when we looked at the case, um, we found that there was evidence to prosecute the offence of um, possessing extreme pornography. Um, what we looked at there was whether or not, A, there was a pornographic image, um, and the element of the act that we prosecuted under was whether or not the image showed that there was likely um, to be serious um, harm and injury caused. But to be clear, if these acts had taken place and no one had taken a photograph, the law would not have been interested? Um, no, um, it's around the image and the um, law which we prosecuted under is about possessing an image, a pornographic image. But your concern was about whether people would come to serious physical damage? Yes, the law is about is does the image show an act which is likely to cause serious harm or injury? So it's not about particular acts being made unlawful. It's about does the image show that there's likely um, to be serious harm or injury? And what the law is obsessed about here is sex. It's about pornographic images. So it's about um, are these extreme images in that does it show the serious harm or injury? But if I was to take a photograph of someone marathon running or mm -hmm. skydiving or smoking a cigarette, the law's not interested there. But that's not pornographic. So you have to make sure that there's a pornographic image, which by so definition sex. is sex. Is any part of it when you're prosecuting a case like this, do you hope that people will simply be embarrassed into pleading guilty? No, that's not why we prosecute cases. We prosecute cases because we have the evidence there and we put them before a jury um, and then it's for the jury to decide. And this particular case went all the way through to a jury, so it wasn't stopped by the judge. It was put before the jury. The judge obviously decided there was a case to answer. Um, and it's a matter for the jury then to decide whether there's any reasonable doubt, which is different, of course, from our test, which is whether there is a realistic prospect of conviction. Are you still happy you brought this case? Having looked at the images and the, and the case, I think, yes, we were right to bring it, and the sort of evidence was there. Um, the fact that a jury decides differently is perfectly proper, but it doesn't mean our original decision was wrong. Are you going to review your procedures as a result of this case? We look at each case individually, and we look at whether the evidence is there, whether it's right to prosecute or not, whether it's in the public interest. So we will certainly do that in the same way that we always do. Um, and our procedures are there to make sure that those um, tests are carried through. Um, this was a case which took place in part on Twitter, as you know, uh, and something people are saying on Twitter, uh, they're wondering whether this prosecution had anything to do with Simon Walsh's work as a barrister prosecuting police officers who were accused of corruption. Did it have anything to do with that? Um, absolutely not. And in fact, I didn't know that that was um, part of his work. So it doesn't matter who the individual is. What we look at is whether the evidence is there and whether an offence has been committed. 
Isn't the embarrassing thing about this case not these images, but the fact it was brought? What's the what's the law doing in people's bedrooms? Um, this isn't. This is the law as it stands. The Act was passed in 2008. Um, it's not for us to comment on legislation, but it's for us to apply the law as Parliament sees fit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Simon Walsh, what's it like having your sex life discussed in great detail in open court? Extraordinarily embarrassing to speak to a jury across a courtroom over seven days explaining what I do in private is not something I would wish on anybody. Did you consider, knowing that was uh, coming, did you consider simply pleading guilty and not going through that? Nothing that I did was illegal and there was no way I would plead guilty, no. You're a QC. What did you think of the legal arguments that were reigned against you? They're poor. The Act has a purpose, and that is to enable prosecutions to take place for um, pornography that would be caught by the Obscene Publications Act were it published in this country. What this Act was actually used against me for was things that were, were pictures that were taken of consensual activities between people in private. That's not what it was designed for. It's designed for extreme pornography, which is bestiality and necrophilia, not two or three people enjoying themselves in a bedroom. What about the law's duty to protect people from physical harm? Whether or not there's a consenting act going on, but the law needs to protect people from harm. And that's absolutely right. And were there any harm caused, there wouldn't be a problem. But these were consenting adults. I was participating in some of them. No harm was caused but, at all. But you're not a medical expert, are you? And that's, no. well, that's what the CPS uh, uh, had at their disposal, and they thought there was a problem. And we had doctors that said there wasn't a problem. No, it, it's activity that uh, doesn't cause injury to the vast majority of people that engage in it. And the test under the Act is whether it is likely to cause harm. These are, th th this is a legislation that's designed to stop extreme activity, the insertion of knives. This is not what this was about. Do you blame the law then or the prosecutors who, who made the decision to bring you to court? It's the way in which the law is being interpreted. The, the, the law is correct, but the way in which it was interpreted in my case was quite wrong. Will you change any part of your behaviour as a result of this case? Will you, will you stop being involved in uh, photographing any of these events? No. Uh, the jury have decided that what I did was legal and proper. This was a case which played out in part on Twitter. Your, your side were able to uh, tweet That's from right. the courtroom. How important was that to you? It was very important because the headline of this case sounds dreadful. If you hear the evidence as it comes out over the course of the trial and you're able to uh, express that over Twitter to people, they can actually feel as if they're participating and people understand what's going on. The reaction on Twitter was overwhelmingly positive because people felt they were there and they could understand what I was going through. Even, I mean, there was the allegation of a, a photograph of uh, an indecent photograph of an underage uh, boy. Was that a, a particularly difficult thing to deal with? That was a very difficult thing to deal with because, again, it is one of those allegations that sounds absolutely ghastly. The jury decided that that image was an image of an adult. Do you want your old job back? Will you get your old job back? Whether I get my old job back is, is a matter for other people. Yes, I would like to carry on doing what I did before, certainly. Do you think you were well treated by your employers? As a barrister, you're not employed. Um, so the only person that would mistreat me would be me. Um, at the moment, I'm unable uh, to return to Chambers, but I hope to be able to do so. Um, have you had any calls of support from people who used to employ you today? I have had innumerable calls from people today. Um, I've not had calls from my uh, chambers. Do you think the, the law will now be looked at, or do you think at least the CPS will review their procedures? I think the CPS ought to look at their procedures because they're using this act to criminalise pictures of perfectly legal activity. When the act was passed, the Ministry of Justice uh, indicated that it would only be used to prosecute pictures that would otherwise be caught under the Obscene Publications Act. There is no way these pictures would have been caught under the Obscene Publications Act. It's being used in a way that Parliament was told it would not be used. What have you learned from this? That's a difficult question. I've learned that 
the juries in this country return perfectly sound and sensible verdicts. But I've also learned that it takes 15 months of very difficult process to get there. I am very much uh, obliged to the jury for their sensible uh, decision, but it's been a long and hard road. Simon Walsh, thank you. Thank you.